Morning. I swear a lot. It is 3.13 in the PM, and you're watching The Foreman. I'm your host, Foreman, and it's been a while since we've done one of these, which is typically the way of it, but, uh, I, you know, inspiration comes to me randomly. I don't tend to think of anything to say for extended periods of time, but I got a flash of inspiration this time, not really from myself, but from a discussion I had. See, recently on the, uh, on the Discord server, uh, I was having a discussion with someone about the how I structure the videos, as it were, and to cut that story very short, I stand by how I structure things and I have my reasons for doing so. But, one thing they mentioned was that they said that it seemed like I fixated on boss fights. And that got me thinking. That got me genuinely thinking, because I do. Now, from the recording perspective, there is a, actually a solid reason for this, and that's because a boss fight is practically a guarantee of progression of things happening in a video. Not necessarily because it's like extra flashy content, but I like to make progress in every video I do in a series. It doesn't always work out that way, but I do my best to try and make that happen. A beating a boss is a clear, definitive, unquestionable example of progression, which is why I do it that way. But also in terms of general gameplay, I do tend to just sort of gun towards the next boss I can. I like to seek out and engage boss fights, and I wondered why specifically. Now, boss fights are cool, like, this has been a staple of video games for decades. It's not too difficult to figure out why someone would like bosses in general, but perhaps why we would perhaps fixate on them maybe above all else. I could perhaps chalk up some of this due to the fact that I've played a lot of Souls games, and the boss fights are by far the highlights of Souls games. And that's not to say that the rest of the gameplay in Souls games is not interesting, but when you're fighting the likes of Ornstein and Smell, Ludwig the Accursed, Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower, you know, like... A fucking... what's his goddamn name? Artorius the Abyss Watcher? Like, bosses are definitely the the cherries on the top of the soul's cake. They are what makes that go. Elden Ring's bosses were fantastic as well. Sekiro's bosses were fucking incredible. Like, the best thing about Sekiro is fighting the bosses, straight up. Because they are so fun. But... Bosses in themselves aren't always necessarily good, and in many cases, they're definitely not the best parts of video games. I don't really like the bosses in Terraria, to be honest. They're not bad. I wouldn't say that they're objectively not good. I just personally don't really like them, because a lot of it consists of, you know, jumping up and down on platforms and holding down the left mouse button, occasionally mashing H to heal, and hoping I can dodge attacks I don't really know about. I don't really have a good reason for why I don't like Terraria bosses, but I'm not keen on them. I still seek them out, um, much like I do in any other game I play, but I'm not keen on them. None of them have really made me go, oh, that was really good and really fun. There have been a couple alright ones, maybe some's like, some I even enjoyed, but for the most part, like, what, fucking Eye of Cthulhu is not fun. Queen Bee is not fun. All the Flesh is fine. Ear of Worlds sucks ass. Like, that, that guy's pathetic. Deerclop sucks. Uh, now, to be fair, I haven't beaten all of the bosses in Terraria yet, so I might be coming across some really good ones soon. But that game, uh, the bosses don't really do it for me, so... The bosses themselves, I've always seen them as... Providing a variety of things that I often really enjoy in video games and are very much what I'm there for. First of all, a challenge. It goes without saying. A boss, typically, is intended to be a test, uh, a test of everything you have learned in the game up to that point and how effectively you can do it, as it were. Which is why some games have shit bosses wherein you run into a boss and it has, it basically has nothing to do with any of the skills you've learned and it is a random gimmick. That's not always terrible, but it's usually a sign of like, yeah, they didn't think this through very well. But challenge in general, obviously I really enjoy cha challenges, and as much as I dislike the bosses in Terraria, I do enjoy beating them. Once I beat them, it feels great. I still get that feeling of accomplishment for beating a boss as I would for most other games. So there's still that enjoyment factor, that feeling of success, of fulfillment, of like, I fucking took that challenge on and won. In other cases, I say the appeal of boss fights, music is a big one. Usually, 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 a game tends to reserve its best tracks for its boss fights. This varies, of course it does. But, um, like, Darkest Dungeon has some fantastic boss tracks. 
Terraria's been okay so far, but those are going to get better later on, I've heard. Uh, the Souls games, and, like, they all have... Well, eh, iffy. A lot of Souls boss tracks are actually really fucking generic, but it makes up for it by the, being the fact that there is no music in the rest of a Souls game. So when you fight a boss and it's actually music, it does escalate and enhance the experience a bit. Although in terms of notable boss tracks, Ludwig the Accursed, once again, Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower, most of the Bloodborne bosses actually, Cleric Beast, uh, Gascoigne. I know there are others. I know there are others. Um, the ending boss, well, one of the ending bosses for Elden Ring has an excellent track. Godric the Golden has an excellent, excellent track as well. They're scattered around, but like, yeah, typically you get some of your best tracks during during boss fighting games. Like in Project in Library of Runa, for example, typically they would implement Millie songs for um, the big fights in the general receptions, which they're really cool and they add a lot to those scenes. The realizations with the unique tracks for the people whom the realizations are referring to. I'm gonna try and avoid a little bit of spoilers there, but those tracks are also really good. Like, you typically do get the better tracks in a video game from the boss fights, and that's why I tend to enjoy them more as well, because I'm a big, big fan of gaming soundtracks, and I love hearing the best shit. Binding of Isaac has a ton of fantastic boss tracks. The generic boss track actually kind of sucks. It's fine, but you hear it so much that it definitely loses its impact. But like, the mother boss fight, the Satan boss fight, there are other boss fights I haven't got to because I haven't played enough of the game yet, but those tracks are fantastic. So I often enjoy playing boss fights because they have those good soundtracks that really lend itself to those moments which I really enjoy and it really makes me feel like we're doing something big here, something big is happening, this is a big deal. And that would be another aspect actually of why I really gun for and enjoy bosses so much is because they are significant events and typically carry narrative weight. This is definitely the case in Library of Ruiner, though every boss fight in that game holds significant narrative and emotional weight, which makes them very enjoyable. This is not applicable to Terraria, but that's not f that's not a fair reason to detract from the bosses in Terraria, because that's not what Terraria is about, really. Terraria does have a plot, it's just not very evident. So I don't consider it fair to criticize Terraria for that, but for Hollow Knight, for instance, like, bosses are significant. Not all of them, but there are significant moments, as it were, encapsulated by the fact that you are fighting bosses. And the tracks in Hollow Knight are also fantastic, just to go back to the previous point. But like in Dragon Quest VIII, which is my favorite game ever, some of those boss fights are just boss fights, but some of them are extremely important narrative moments. Some of them are straight up tragic. Like, that feeling, the, the feeling that this matters, that this is a big deal, this is a significant moment, this is a big moment does a lot to make a boss fight more enjoyable, even if the boss itself isn't even that good. What matters is how you feel while doing it. The matter, What matters is the context. The context adds so much. In Darkest Dungeon, when you're defending the Hamlet against Wolf, fighting Wolf is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest, but the music combined with the fact that Wolf and his brigands are literally burning the place to the fucking ground, and you, your party of heroes, those four heroes, are the only things standing in their way. Adds a lot of, of, um, weight. Especially to your first ever encounter with Wolf, because you're like, you don't really know what's going on by this point. You're like, is he gonna burn the entire fucking place down if I fail? Like, we've gotta win. We've got to win. It feels important. Funny thing is, as I'm recording this, I'm literally listening to the Scribe of Magics from Inscription right now, because it's very, I just, it's a nice track, and I like listening to it while I'm talking, because it provides the right kind of vibe, for, I feel, anyway. It just feels good to listen to while I'm talking. But, Inscription's boss fights were interesting. I think specifically the boss fights in Leshy's Cabin were the ones that really, like, encapsulated everything I liked about boss fights, where because Leshy himself, bless his heart, set the scene. He dimmed the lights, he put on a mask, the music would change, he put on a different voice, and then the bosses would have their respective gimmicks, and it made for a big, interesting, important moment. And in terms of having a, a context that makes the moment feel important, well, if you lose, you die. You're literally gonna die. So, it already has that context of having, of being significant, because you're literally fighting for your life against a challenge kind of beyond you, 
which is really cool. But I think Inscription handled the Leshy's Cabin boss fights really well, and I'm desperate to actually do a video on Casey's mod at some point, because I still haven't played it, and I hear it's really good. I kind of want to fiddle around with that for a while, but I'm hor horrifically busy with everything at the moment. I have so many ongoing videos and series is going on. I should finish something. It's been a while since we finished something, but Hollow Knight and Terraria are long games. The, uh, the Library of Ruda book club took longer than I thought, and it's still going, technically. I haven't finished it yet. I'm doing Isaac videos every now and then. You don't really beat Isaac, per se. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'll get there, I'll get there. We're wandering off topic. But I don't think it for me necessarily, I don't think it has to be boss fights per se, but significant encounters are what I like. I like encounters in general with a lot of weight, a lot of stakes, a lot of challenge, a good track behind it. Like, um, this won't interest many of you, I'm sure, but it's relevant. Playing Total War, War, Total War Warhammer 3, that game doesn't really have boss fights per se, unless you play like the campaigns. Like, Realm of Chaos has what you could call boss fights, and I would say that they are. They actually seem very interesting. But, Total War Warhammer 3, in terms of like context, stakes, and the significance of individual battles, entirely depends on just how your campaign is going and what's going on and the units involved and the numbers involved and stuff like that. Like, um, if I were, I was playing as Cathay, for instance, and one of their jobs is to guard the Great Bastion, which is basically the Great Wall of China, because the faction is basically China. Um, but beyond the Great Wall, beyond the Bastion, is just the Chaos Wastes, just loads of chaos, and the idea is that their forces will repeatedly attack the Bastion, and you have to man the defences and defend it, alongside everything else you're doing in a campaign. But this creates for naturally occurring, enjoyable, high-stakes situations, where I would have a Lord on those walls, and I would send him out to intercept enemy forces as they approach the wall. The wall has a garrison, but surely it would be better to destroy them before they got there, and if their army's strong enough, then like an interception strike could help a lot. But the point is, I would march these people out, not regular men and women, you know, Cathay's units are just people, off to fight these like, demonic hell creatures and their fucking crazy bastards who lead them. And it's like these desperate fights to protect the wall, to keep them out of Cathay. And these fights are difficult often because you know, the AI spawns quite a lot of units, and the Chaos units in the game are quite good. Like, they've gotten a lot of buffs, and are very strong now. So you end up with these situations where you inadvertently create your own significant encounters, your own significant situations. You grow attached to lords who manage to pull out these victories, who face down these bullshit odds, and manage to lead their people to vic victory. And you grow attached to units that perform well in these situations as well. It's not quite the same, but it is significant encounters. The music in um, Total Warhammer 3 is actually quite good. Cathay's battle track is fantastic. Chaos's is also really good. There are some really good ones. So you have all of these elements coming together, like the terrain beyond the wall is this blasted hellscape. You can hear the sounds of combat with the music going over it. You select a unit and they respond verbally to address you, and the legendary lords always have good lines, so they're saying cool shit in the middle of high-pitched battles with lots going on and the music's swelling over it, and they're fantastic, like, you know, high-stakes encounters. Which really, I think, is the biggest key. Like, it doesn't have to be a boss fight for me. It has to be high-stakes, stressful, big moments. Those are what I like. But the problem, of course, I guess, is that I fixate on wanting to have these moments, and anyone with half a brain can tell you that the only way these moments become big, high stakes, interesting, and be all end all is by having a ton of moments that are not high stakes, interesting, be all end all. You need build up, you need gaps in between, you need breaks. And this probably lends itself to why um, someone was asking me about the structuring of my videos, because I am focusing on trying to make progress and hit bosses every video, but Surely having videos where less things happen and we just hang out would mean that videos in which we're fighting bosses and it's really difficult and everything's going on, they would be better because we had those videos where we didn't do such big, stressful, be all end all kinds of things, you know? Like, you have to have, you got the ups, you gotta have the downs as well, like, momentum, pace. 
It's this a marathon, not a sprint. Although I have to say, I think I treat every fucking series I do as a sprint, which um, uh, is a questionable decision. This lends itself to why I quite like Disco Elysium, of all things. Because, um, well, Disco Elysium doesn't have boss fights because it doesn't have combat. You could argue that within the context of the video game, talking to someone like Everett, for instance, could be considered a boss fight because it's, it's a meeting of the minds, as it were. He has his agenda, you're trying to find out what's going on, and you're trying to play off, like... You're trying to play off getting information from him versus doing what he wants versus not doing too much of what he wants. That it A makes you look bad and B inhibits the investigation or just helps this guy out too much because he seems kind of greasy. Also not allowing him to dominate you in the conversation and steer the conversation in the direction he wants to go while also not being outright hostile. It's a big balancing act which you could describe as a boss fight, but I think that would be a bit of a stretch. But I like Disco Elysium because it has a lot of significant moments that are also not significant. Talking to Rene about his military history is a significant moment, not in the grand scheme of the game at all, in terms of actual gameplay or the narrative of the game itself. Who gives a fuck? Like, whether or not you learn about Renee's military history doesn't make a fucking difference in the grand scheme of the investigation, or the lives of the people in Martinez, or your own personal progression, or anything. It doesn't fucking matter in the slightest. But it does, it is important. It feels important when you're talking to this battered old soldier. It's important to him, and by extension it becomes important to you. Because you become invested. As you learn about what this man went through, to get to where he is now. Kuno doesn't matter at all, but Kuno is extremely important. <laughs> Both does not matter from a gameplay and overall narrative perspective, and is also very important from a gameplay and overall narrative perspective. Your interactions with Gart don't actually mean that much, probably, but they are also very important in shaping what kind of person you are. How do you respond to the first person to give you grief? and not be immediately friendly. And how is that going to fuel your future interactions with him and with everyone else in the future? You go and talk to the Hardy Boys. Can you keep your cool while you're being fucking heckled for everything you do and having the shit taken out of you for everything you do and having someone basically tell you to fuck off when you're trying to ask a question? Having a legal advisor interject every five seconds to go, don't answer that. No, you don't have to answer that. No, don't ask that question. No, you can't ask that question. You have no power here. And that's significant, even though it's just a conversation in a hotel between a washed up drunk old detective and a bunch of like vigilante rough ruffians. It doesn't matter, but it also really matters. You know what I mean? These significant events are important, and they're given the weight of context by how much you give to it, and how much you engage with it. It's a, it's a two-way street, right? You have to be able to reach your hand out to meet the game halfway. It is perhaps verging off of topic a little bit, because these aren't boss fights, these are just significant occasions. I like the boss fights, and this might sound weird, but I like the boss fights in XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Because each uh, Chosen that is introduced to you, there are three of them, are kind of like when you first encounter their game mechanics, they seem wildly unfair. Or kind of. Like, the Hunter is a kind of a bitch, and the Warlock, it depends really on when he spawns and what position you're in, but the Assassin can seem fucking outrageous when you first meet her, because she's invisible and can't miss with her sword. So what do you do? But the beauty of those, I'd say, the alien rulers are fucking bullshit by the way, I fucking hate them, but they're not bad, I just don't like them. But in terms of the Chosen, the beauty of those is to encounter these incredibly seemingly unfair fights. Bearing in mind, you're already a resistance movement, so you're already playing the underdog. I'll get to that in a minute. But you're already playing the underdog, and you're up against like an intergalactic, invisible assassin with a fucking sword and a shotgun, and she's crazy. But you can still beat her. In fact, it's not that difficult if you know what you're doing. And you feel the weight of that success as well. And plus, the Chosen Assassin's um, boss music is fantastic. I love that track. It's so good. Such a good use of, like, just the instruments in general. And it has a slight, teeny, tiny Japanese 
uh, twist to it in there. It's very good. I love that track a lot. Fun fact, the guy who did the tracks for War of the Chosen also did tracks for uh, Command & Conquer Red Alert 3. So you know it's good. Let me actually fucking find his name, because I absolutely love that guy. I love his work. Tim Wynn. Yes, Tim Wynn. The track is called Shadow Domain, which is the track from uh, War of the Chosen. But Tim Wynn was also responsible for tracks from Command & Conquer Red Alert 3, such as Rock and Or, one of my favorites, Battleground of the Bear, Red Rock for Mother Russia, and Bring It. Red Rock and Or and Bring It being two of my favorites as uh, the Allies tracks and their proper, like, almost kind of punk rocky tracks. I really like them. But Tim Wynn, fucking brilliant. Love that guy. Don't know what he's like as a person, I hope he's not an asshole, but his music work is very good. But, I mentioned underdogs, and I want to come back to that, because I think that might be the most important aspect of good boss fights to me. I like feeling like I don't... I'm out of my depth. I like feeling like I don't stand a chance. I like feeling like, narratively at least, I like feeling like I'm out of my depth. I like fighting something that is stronger than me and winning. Because that sense of accomplishment just goes straight through the roof, roof like 200% when you fight something that it doesn't feel like you should be able to beat. This definitely lends itself to Total War, where I win battles, I shouldn't, I don't, it doesn't seem like I should be able to win, but we manage to clutch it out. That creates those powerful moments. Plenty of boss fights are like this, where you're fighting things you just don't think you should be able to beat, and you do. The bosses in Darkest Dungeon are a big proponent of this. The creatures you fight in the dungeons are beyond the scope of comprehension for your poor, poor he heroes. That party of heroes had no idea that they were going to fight a large writhing mass of flesh but they are there and they're doing it and they manage to win and it makes you love them more because they managed to do it they managed to pull it out even if it's not actually gameplay wise that difficult the fact that you managed to go up against something that is essentially stronger than you and superior to you and beat it means everything and XCOM 2 that is supposed to be the whole narrative experience of that game in a nutshell. You are the underdog. You're literally a resistance movement. The whole point of the game is that you are outgunned, outnumbered, and outclassed, which makes the victories more satisfying. That's why I love playing The Long War in that game as well, because you really feel like you're outnumbered and outclassed. And mods. I like to play mods in that game that make it harder instead of making you stronger, but there, you have to get a bit of a balance there. You need some mods to buff you a bit, because trying to play a lot of the mod challenges in XCOM 2 with base game stuff might be impossible, or at least extremely difficult, so you got to balance it, but I like feeling like I'm out of my depth there. Bruna does a good job of this too, because a lot of those boss encounters you have, both the realizations and the other things, feel like they're a bit beyond you, like this person in each circumstance, has access to power that you just don't. And you have to try and keep pace with that, and when you do, it's incredibly satisfying. The Bombing Corporation's quote-unquote boss encounters were like this as well, because you're fighting legends, really. Legends. People who have done stuff your nuggets can't even fathom, and you have to figure out a way to bring them down. And when you do, it's really satisfying, even though it's usually a really painful experience, but... As much as Lobotomy Corporation's gameplay is questionable, I still love playing it and plan to do that again at some point. I really would like to. But feeling like I'm the underdog and pulling out the victory is extremely important to me in a good boss fight. Wolf in Sekiro may be an incredibly effective swordsman, but he goes up against people who are way beyond him, like, typically speaking. Like, some of these people are insane. But not only as Wolf do you fight them, but he meets them blade to blade. Like, it's a very get in their face and fight them game, not run around and hide game. So, it really does feel like a contest of skill where your own actual skill, as opposed to just being strong, allows you to win, which provides that, that uh, underdog succeeding feeling, which feels really, really good. That's what I love about boss fights. This is all the things I love about boss fights. This is what I want at any given time. And that's why I gun for them so much, because I crave these experiences, and I always want more of them. Tell you what. 
Dawn of War, which is from the Warhammer 40k series, the Warhammer 40k game. Dawn of War Dark Crusades handled this excellently because every time you engage in a boss fight in this game, which is basically attacking a faction's headquarters, there is like a two minute cutscene where the defender, who is the boss, goes over all of their defenses and basically talks about how fucked you are for attacking them and that you're not going to get through. Then the battle starts and they immediately shit talk your character. They really set those battles up to be like, mate, you're fucked. They just have too much. You can't possibly break through. And I know, that's baiting to be like, yeah, I can break through, and then you do. But you do get that feeling of being just outpowered, where it's like, you know, you're attacking a Necron tomb. You're attacking a Necron tomb. That's suicidal. <laughs> no one can do that, but then you do. That's the key point. I don't like games being too heavy-handed about to being like, oh, you can't do this, you're not strong enough. But I like it implied, I like it inferred, I like to be able to look at a situation and be like, this seems beyond me, and then win. That's why I liked Warsaw so much, I think, actually, because that whole game was about the Warsaw Uprising. So you were playing a faction that was destined to lose, but, well, lose in the conventional sense. The Warsaw Uprising was very uh, impactful on the Nazi regime in World War II. It did a very... It, made a big difference but like you're destined to lose the game as it were but being forced to kind of make do with what you can it's very appealing to me both from an underdog perspective and a strategy game perspective because the cornerstone of strategy is to make do with what you have get the most out of what you have which lends itself to experiences of feeling like you just not haven't quite got enough but you're having to just do everything you can to get the most out of what you have to try and pull out a victory or at least a favorable outcome or at least a less unfavorable outcome depending on the circumstances. I think we can leave it there ladies and gentlemen but this is why I love boss fights so much. This is why I fixate on them so much. This is why I'm kind of all about them. I love boss fights. I love... I don't actually like boss rushes because they typically lose the context that makes them so interesting because like... It's hard to narratively justify why you would be fighting every boss in the game one after the other. But in, from a pure challenge perspective, boss rushes can be fun. It depends on the game in question, really. And it depends how long the boss fights are, because if they're fucking long boss fights and you have to do like 10 and then you lose on number 8, that's rough. That's really rough. Steridon has fantastic bosses. Fucking love them. Because you start off with fighting something just slightly bigger than you and like kind of your equal to taking on capital ships by yourself. And the soundtrack in that game is fantastic. But none of you care about Steridon. I know. I know. I do know this. Regardless, ladies and gentlemen, we'll end here. Thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Teacup of Doom, Beep, Adarsh, Sanjeev, Alkia, Honeydew Corporation, Sweet Baby Red, MB Alias, Lord Skellington, Jessicity, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Lepalulbite, Kbub, Magical, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Sir World, Jumping with Joy, Warmaster Oku, SCP 106A, Nomad, and Kenny C800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you all so much for watching. Boss fights. Give them to me. Which ones do you like? Which ones are your favorites? Try and keep them spoiler free if possible. Or as spoiler free as you can realistically do, because if the boss fight's good enough, then I might want to do it myself at some point, because I'm always on the hunt for good boss fights. But yeah. Let me know your favorite bosses. Let me know which ones were really good from a gameplay perspective. Let me know which ones were important to you from like narrative and emotional perspectives, which ones created that sense of fight, of punching up, of striking against something way tougher than you, which ones are the most important to you. They, they stick out in your mind, satisfying moments, moments that ring out throughout your career in playing video games. I want to hear about them, put them in the comments or come to the Discord and talk about them there. Do whatever the fuck you want. But whatever you do, I hope I see you in the next one. Doodles, goodbye.